Hello everyone and welcome to the first video in our Art Asset Pipeline tutorial series. My name is Alan, I'm a technical support specialist in the CryEngine operations team and today we're going to talk about creating physical collision proxies for your assets in 3ds Max as well as getting them into the engine using the Cry Exporter tools, in this case the Cry Max plugin. I will also cover the same process by using the FBX pipeline for those of you who use the 3ds Max version which is incompatible with the CryEngine tools or who simply just want to avoid using them. A physical collision proxy is a geometrical element, or a simple shape, which is linked to an asset and will tell the physics system which parts of the asset should collide with another asset's physics proxy. Since checking for collisions is generally pretty expensive performance-wise, the collision proxy should be as simple as possible, meaning it should be either a much more simplified version of the asset, or it could just be a simple geometrical outline around the asset. For example, in case of something like this bucket over here, using a simple primitive cylinder as a collision proxy will certainly be enough, unless you want to be able to place objects inside of the bucket. In that case, the collision proxy should be detailed enough in order to allow you to do that. So you kind of have to plan ahead and think of which instances are going to be using this asset. In this current example, if you only need this bucket to be a simple world element which the player should only be able to collide with and eventually kick around, then using a simple cylinder primitive as a physical proxy should do the job. However, if your game revolves around a lot of physical interactions and allow the player to pick objects up and, you know, play around with them, then you may want to convey more detail in the proxies of your assets. But of course, the more complicated the physical proxy of the assets around your character, the more workload will be thrown onto the physics threads. Let's focus on importing a simple asset with a very simple physical proxy, using the Crymax tools first. If you haven't installed the Crytools plugin for the supported version of 3ds Max you're working with, installing it is extremely simple. Just navigate to the installation folder of your engine by opening the install location via the launcher, for example, and then go into the tools folder, where you find the Crytools installer executable. Double click on it, then choose install and click next. The installer will automatically recognize any supported software installed in your computer and will automatically install the CryEngine tools for them. Once you have your 3ds Max all fired up, you can go ahead and open the asset you want to create a physical proxy for. In this case, I have a very simple metal bucket I'm going to work with as an example. The first thing I'm going to work on is the geometry of the proxy. So for this example, I'm going to model the geometry by hand. I'm going to click on the Create tab and I'll pick the geometry primitive which fits my asset best. In this situation, I can encase the entire bucket into a simple cylinder. I'll click on the top-down perspective, in orthographic mode, to make sure that I have the best angle on the asset, so that I can center the cylinder nicely. Then, I'll just create the cylinder, starting from the center of the asset, and I'll drag the margins all the way to the borders of the bucket. Then, I'll release the mouse button, and I'll scale the cylinder up, until I can see it covering the top of the bucket. Now I'm just going to decrease the number of height segments and cap segments to zero. I want this to be as simple as possible. And I'll just adjust the sides amount so that the bucket will still be able to roll around. This should be good. Now I can right click on the cylinder and click on convert to editable poly. And I'll proceed to make the bottom face a little bit smaller so that the proxy matches the narrower bottom of the bucket. So I'm going to click on the polygon selection mode and I'll press E to switch to the scale gizmo and then I'll scale the face down until it fits the size of the bottom of the bucket. And that's it. This can work great as a very simple collision proxy for this bucket. So let's just go ahead and start working on the material setup. So let's open up the material editor in 3ds Max by pressing on this button here, or simply pressing M on your keyboard. Next, I'm going to click on any material from the list, assuming it's not already used, and I'll start setting up our own multi-material. First off, you're going to have to click on this button which says Standard and you're going to change the material from a standard material to a multi slash sub object material. You can either keep or discard the old one, it doesn't matter in this case. I'm going to set the number of sub materials to two, one for the actual material of the bucket, which will contain all of the texture maps for our asset, and the other one for the physics proxy. Now here you can see that we have two material IDs, which we will later assign to each of the models in the canvas. We will use the material ID 1 for the bucket itself and the material ID 2 for the proxy. Click on the first submaterials little box which states none and we will pick a standard material from the list. Now let's rename this material to bucket so that we know that this submaterial will belong to the bucket itself. The preview of the material's thumbnail in the material editor in CryEngine will always be the first submaterial in the list, so we're going to use the material ID 1 as our bucket material. 
Now we're going to simply change the shader to Crytek shader, and we can click on this button to go back to our parent material. Now for the material ID 2, we're going to click on none again and assign another standard material. And we're going to name the submaterial as proxy. And we're also going to change the shader to a Crytek shader. Now here comes the important part in this. We obviously don't want the proxy geometry to render in the editor. So what we have to do is to click on physicalize and we're going to open this drop down menu and choose physical proxy, not draw. I personally prefer to pick red as an ambient color so I can discern between the proxies and the other meshes in the scene, but it's not an important step. Also, you can set the opacity of the material to 50% so that you can see your model through the proxy and make the right adjustments if you need to. That's pretty much it for the material setup. You can now go back to the parent material and assign the material to both the cylinder and the bucket itself by selecting them and then clicking on this assign button over here. Now one important thing I have to do is to rename my cylinder to dollar sign physics underscore proxy and then 001. And although the numbers aren't required, if you have multiple proxies on the same parent mesh, you should always number them properly and remember the right nomenclature. Also, it's very important to drag the physics proxy geometry over to its corresponding mesh and parent it. That way the engine will know which geometry it belongs to if you have multiple elements in your 3ds Max scene. Now we're going to go back to the concept of material IDs and as you may remember we've set the material ID 1 to the material we're going to use for the bucket and material ID 2 to the material we're going to use for the proxy. Since we assigned the exact same parent material to both the bucket and the proxy, we need to somehow find a way to tell the bucket and its proxy which material ID they should both use. And we can easily do that by using the material modifier. So make sure you click on the modify tab, and let's select the bucket first, and click on the modifier lists drop down menu. And I'll assign the material modifier. You can just type it out in your keyboard and it will automatically be selected. And as you can see, we have material ID 1 selected for the bucket, so we can just leave that the way it is. Now we'll do the same thing for the proxy by selecting it, assigning the material modifier to it, and changing the material ID to 2. And that's pretty much it. In order to export this into CryEngine, all you have to do is to save the max file into the location where you want the object to be exported, which is most likely somewhere in your objects folder. I'm probably gonna have to blur this part out, but you guys will understand my reasons. And once I save my max file, I can go over to the Utilities tab, and I can click on the CryEngine Exporter button. If you don't see this option in the list, you can click on this button in the corner, which will allow you to configure the button sets. From here, you can just click and drag the CryEngine Exporter over to your buttons. But since I have it already, I don't need to do that. Now back to the Exporter interface, the default settings should already be okay. Just make sure you have the Export File Per Node enabled, so that every single parent in the hierarchy will be exported as its own asset, not our situation right now, but it's generally what you always want, and you always want to merge all nodes together. Now we're going to pick the objects we want to export by making sure that the parent object is selected, and then by clicking on this Add Selected button here. This will automatically export all the child elements of the selected parent as well. So before we hit export, let's quickly generate our CryEngine material according to what our setup in 3ds Max was, and we can do this by scrolling down this tool panel and clicking on the Create Material button. You're going to want to have CryEngine running in the background for this to work, since the engine itself has to get the material creation request from 3ds Max. You can now go ahead and place it in the right destination, whether you want it to be in a materials folder or in the same folder as your mesh, but in this case I'm just going to place it in the exact same folder as the bucket, and I'm just going to rename it to bucket, and I'll click OK. Now as you can see, we have a multi-material with two sub-materials, the bucket and the proxy, which is exactly what we expected. And now we're ready to go back into 3ds Max and simply just click on Export Nodes, which will automatically export all the files in the same location where you saved your Max file. You can now just drag your texture maps in, assign them to the material accordingly, place your assets in the scene, convert your asset to an entity, and run a physics simulation. And there you go, you have collisions. Now before I show you how the physics proxies work for the FBX pipeline, I'll show you a quick little trick that can help you quickly create detailed proxies in the future. If we look over to the toolbar here, you can see Crymax tools among one of the drop-down menus. Click it and click on Cry Toolbox. These are a set of tools which can help you in many different cases. I'm going to just click on the Cry Model option and expand the Physics Proxy tools. I'm going to set my Material ID to 2 so that any proxy that this tool will create will automatically use the second Material ID of the model that I generate the proxy from. 
Keep this in mind that the object has to be an editable poly in order for this to work. Now if I select the bucket and I just click on aligned, this will create a box around my entire object. Another thing that I can do if I really want to go into a lot of detail with my model would be to go into polygon selection mode and then I can select a bunch of polygons, just like that, and then I can click on aligned. And that way it will create a bounding box around the elements I've selected. And this way I can just go around and create an outline for the entire bucket in a much quicker way without having to model anything. Although in this case you're probably much better off just modeling a hole in a cylinder and calling it a day. As I've previously said, you can just keep all these proxies as multiple proxies, or you can attach them to one another. It's your choice in the end. Now for the FBX pipeline, I'm going to go back in time to the point where I've only had the bucket with no proxy at all. The modeling procedure for the proxy is literally the same. Create an outline around your object with either simple primitive shapes or a low poly model which resembles your original asset. For this use case, I'll show you one of my own personal favorite methods for creating proxies when I'm in a hurry or when I just don't want to spend too much time creating the proxy, but I still don't want to lose too much of the detail of the original mesh. So in this case, I want to be able to fill this bucket with hundreds of thousands of GPU particles and I want them to realistically collide with the edges of the bucket. So what I usually do in these situations is I duplicate my original bucket with Ctrl V and I make sure to select the copy and not instance and I'm going to call the duplicated model $proxy. Now I'm going to drag the $proxy model over the bucket so that it'll be parented to it, just like before. In order for this to work, the only thing I have to do for the material setup in 3ds Max is to have the bucket and the proxy have two different materials. No other setup is required, I only need the engine to know that these two elements have different materials and then I can set one of the materials to force the mesh that is applied to to act as the physical proxy. So I'm going to press M to open the material editor and then I'll simply select the bucket and assign the first material to it. And then I'll select the proxy and I'll assign the second material to it. In order to know which one is which, when I import them into CryEngine, I'll call the first material bucket and the second one will be proxy. I'm also going to change the ambient color of the proxy to red and give it 50% opacity just for you guys so that you can see through the object and know which one is the proxy and which one's the original bucket, even though it's going to be pretty clear anyway. Now all I need to do is to simplify the geometry of the proxy asset because I don't need it to contain this enormous amount of detail. I'm going to do this by using a modifier called Pro Optimizer. This modifier can reduce the vertex count of the object without having to create holes in the mesh. I'm going to quickly hide the original bucket and now I can click on Calculate and I can slowly reduce the vertex percent value as low as I can to the point where the proxy still resembles the original bucket. This looks good. If you see any floating faces where you don't need them to be or if you just see some slight mistakes in the geometry and you want to go and fix it yourself, you can just collapse the Pro Optimizer and this will allow you to edit the geometry again. So you can easily get rid of the faces you don't need, but usually the result will be good enough. And that's pretty much it. I can just go ahead and click on export and save the file as an FBX file anywhere I want. Now back into CryEngine, I'm going to open the FBX mesh importer and I'll drag the FBX file I just created into the viewport. Now you can just head over to the physicalization tab and set the proxy materials physicalization to proxy only. I'll also set the proxy mesh as a proxy in this left hand side panel. Now you can just generate the material in the location you want and then you can also save the model in its final location. And that's it. Now you know how both the Crytools pipeline and the FBX pipeline work when creating physical proxies in 3ds Max. And now you can choose your preferred workflow yourself. If you have any further questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below or head on over to our Discord channel where you can get in contact with us and other CryEngine developers so you can learn more about bringing your projects to life. I'll see you there.